corner, Sugar Ray Robinson. When he crossed a hotel lobby, people stared in admiration. Ray was born to wear a crown. No champion boxed or lived with his style. He was the man. My father would walk into a room and people would stop and turn around and go, who's that? Robinson's son, Ray Jr. Dad out of the ring was the embodiment of everything he was in the ring. He was the showman. He was uh, the best and the sharpest. He was the lovable con man. Born Walker Smith Jr., 1921 in Detroit. By his teen years, home was Harlem where he tap danced for pennies and played craps for dollars. A minister had redemption in mind when he got Ray a job at the local boxing gym. That was all right with Mrs. Robinson, as long as her son didn't fight. But destiny beckoned. Boxing historian, Bert Sugar. The problem was that Walker Smith, known back then as Smitty, was too young to fight. So his manager, George Gainford, borrowed some local kid's ID card. And that kid's name was Ray Robinson. Well, a few weeks later, after one of Ray's fights, a local sports writer came up to Gainford and said, George, you've got a real sweet kid there. George looked at him and said, yeah, he's sweet as sugar. And from that day on, Walker Smith became Sugar Ray Robinson, and he wore the name brilliantly. Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson was the most faultless fighter ever, period. End of paragraph. No man can enjoy this coming. I've never saw a man other than Ray Robinson throw a knockout punch going backwards. Can you imagine the leverage? He was Beethoven, he was Bach, he was T.S. Eliot, he was everything. Robinson didn't make a fight, he gave a recital. And these performances stretched over 25 years. Years of drama, of losing and reclaiming titles. A total of six world championships by the end. And the integrity evident as he boxed was not separate from the man. Wary, proud, he often defied the white boxing establishment. Boxing historian Hank Kaplan. He made life miserable for a lot of promoters. He demanded his money up front. At times he didn't show up. But the most important thing was he was the best there was and he knew it. He was a tough businessman. Wait a second, boys. Where did we get paid for this? He was the first fighter to demand and receive a percentage of TV, theater, and gate revenues. By the mid-40s, he was making $50,000 a fight. And on 7th Avenue in Harlem, Ray the Entrepreneur literally owned a block of business establishments. Ray's first wife, Edna Mae Robinson. Harlem was his. He had Sugar Ray's dry cleaning, Sugar Ray's bar and grill. He had a charm. That was why people fell in love with him. And the minute that car would pull up in front of Sugar Ray's, the bar would fill up immediately with persons standing around to see him. Ray never tired of the crowds. He was happiest among the multitude. The Merry King. Every day was Christmas. Edna Mae Robinson. He loved the adulation. Yes, he needed it. He wanted it all the time. The mere fact that he could never be alone meant something. He knew he was powerful in boxing, but there was something that troubled him deeply. He did not have great self-esteem. That was one of the reasons why he used to cling to me so tightly. Mrs. Robinson, what's Ray like at home? Well, um, he's very, very uh, good to live with. He's kind, he's considerate, and uh, he will never share a problem with you. If there's anything that worries him, he keeps it to himself. So times like that, he may be a little quiet, but he's wonderful to live with. This was the public persona, Ray Robinson ideal husband and father. Sugar Ray Robinson, the Father's Day Committee is deeply honored to name you the sports father of 1952. Here's your medal and my heartiest congratulations. But the father of the year was anything but Ray Robinson Jr. My father was a trip. 
no matter what he did, and he did some, some things that were not right <laughs> sometimes, no matter what he did, he was really held above reproach. He'd meet women and they would be all over him. He was a real rogue. I knew he messed around with women, but I didn't know to the extent that it impacted upon my love. Uh, I happened to one day witness him hit her, and I said, whoa, daddy, stop. And he was shocked that I was there. And he turned around and walked out the door. As he tried to conceal the turbulence in his private life, Robinson let it be known that he found no bliss in boxing. You give me the impression that you rather enjoy your work, is that right? No, just the opposite, Ed. I've never enjoyed boxing. I, uh, I just, it's just a business with me, and I guess I just, I know I've never enjoyed it. It reminds me of the old, uh, something barbaric, when two people get in a pit and they throw money at them and they fight. In 1952, it was Robinson's ambition that failed him. Fighting Joey Maxim for the light heavyweight title, he was outweighed by 15 pounds, and he lost another 15 on this night of stultifying heat. The referee collapsed. Eventually, Robinson did too. Ahead in the bout, he couldn't move off his stool at the start of the 14th round. Immediately after the fight, Robinson retired. See this face, he had once said? Ain't no man ever gonna bust it up. I won't stay in the business long enough. Still pretty, he now did his shuffling in a song and dance act, performing in nightclubs, and on television. When I walk through a jam, no one knows who I am. Put your head on my chest, and I miss the success. Success. The boxer had found it. But the song and dance man did not. His performance fees dwindled, and his business was reeling from mismanagement. 33 years old, about to go broke, he had to fight again. What uh, prompted your decision to uh, return to the ring? Jim, it's common gossip when a fighter makes a return to the ring that he's broke, desperately in need of finances. Well, that's somewhat true. I need a buck as well as anyone else, I guess. Goes to the head, he drives the right to the chin, and Olsen is down for right up the cut to the Though still capable of brilliance, often he was no more than ordinary. He went on because of the money. IRS agents now waited at the end of his fights. In 1960, his skills all but evaporated. There was yet more. His wife divorced him, Edna Mae Robinson. He owed so much money that he foreclosed on his businesses. After we were separated, he began to take fights. The prices were like cut in half. You felt great empathy for Ray, no matter what he'd done. He was in trouble now, and I felt deeply sorry for him. If I can regain the midway championship for the sixth time, I most certainly would then say it's been a very wonderful career, and thank God and all the wonderful people who's played for my success. But there would be no more titles. On November 10, 1965, at age 44, he lost a decision to Joey Archer. The show had gone on too long. Finally, the curtain dropped. Madison Square Garden. One month after his final bout, thousands recalled the way it had been with a tribute to a native son. At long last, Sugar Ray took a final bow. Bert Sugar. One time at the old garden, I overheard a father and son talking. The father was pointing at the garden marquee and telling his son, that's the greatest. And one day the father said, you're going to be able to tell your son that you saw the greatest. You saw Sugar Ray Robinson.